beautiful ones. I'm just going to make sure everything is live and well before I start. And if you see me and you're watching this live, just say hello. And if you are watching later on a replay, replay is everything. <laughs> and so let me know if you're on the replay as well. Okay, beautiful one. So um, I'm just so delighted to be here with all of you. Um, just coming off something beautiful. And um, it's just made me want to really share a little bit about something that I wanted to talk about today. And it is, as you can see in the title, done the work and not yet, done the work and yet not living it, question mark. So if you are new here, beautiful one, welcome. My name is Li Ying and I am a divine energy alchemist, a ceremonial keeper of the way of tea and a sacred transformation mentor. My mission is to help at least 10 women every month to live on purpose in their own authentic power. And it is through the magic of ceremony, ancient wisdom, especially steeped in the Taoist alchemical healing ways and the bioenergetic healing ways, that I truly hold space for spiritual, creative, feminine leaders to really live on purpose. And when I say live on purpose, I really mean allowing your, your light to fully come on board to allow yourself to fully, fully shine your light without ever having to apologize for your own presence. And more than ever, um, what I'm really, really seeing, and I've had many experience just helping women through this, is the idea that I have done the work and yet I am not living it. Why is that? Um, you know, I can tell you pretty certainly, you know, nine times out of 10 calls that I have with women, they would be telling me that they are a Reiki master, they are a crystal healer, they are a witch, they are a goddess, they are a priestess, and yet they feel like they've done the work and yet they're not living it. So welcome into this space. This is something I want to share and I'm gonna be really, really upfront and really honest so that I don't waste your time. And this is the way I teach as well. I want you to know exactly what is there so that you gain clarity and start to take the actions that you need. Because here's the deal, my love. If you feel that you're not living your purpose and yet you're kind of like dilly-dallying, still in that wishy-washy way of living, it is really high time that you understand and get this little wake-up call that you need to make a move. You have to start moving. If you say you're stuck, if you say that you don't know who I am anymore, uh, I would so love to do that, I, so, I would so love to have that, but maybe I need to wait. Or that, you know, um, you know, I'll think about it. Or like, uh, you know, I, mm, I don't know who I am anymore. I don't know what it is. Hi, beautiful. Hi, beautiful. Mwah. Thank you for watching all of you. You know, if you are in that position where you're saying things that I just mentioned, I just want you to know deeply that it is time that you make a move. And, you know, if you catch yourself saying that, oh, I've done all the work, but, right? I'm just going to put it out there and say that it's a very dangerous way of putting yourself in a position where you feel really constricted and really stuck. And listen, just, just open your heart to listening to me. Again, I always say this in every live that I have here. You don't have to agree with me. What I'm saying is not necessarily right. And I just want you to open your heart up to listening with curiosity. Hi, Leah! Welcome! It's so good to have you here. Yes, so if you feel like this right now, I'm holding space for you, my love. You, you know, it's, it's okay to feel that way, but I want you to know that when you are in that situation, the one thing that really helped me and really was a game changer for me is that I understand that I need to embody my soul purpose. And you know, soul purpose means so many things to people, to everyone, to every different person. For me, the sole purpose of a being, such as you and me, 
is always and forever that united states that unified field is the return to the unified field it's a remembrance so what we do is just part of it but what we what, what our sacred work is is also just part of it it's all a lesson it's all these this beautiful tapestry of like you know the things that we scripted right that we're going to play out in this world but the sole purpose is always and remains the one and only flowering the blossoming the remembrance of who we truly are there is no exception to this and i say this with all my heart because i've definitely witnessed this before and i've heard many many masters and teachers say this at the very end of your life at, and this is no exception even for the person who's the most unspiritual at the end of their lives they come into remembrance of who they really are and they draw their last breath and that is it they move on to their next lives and my mission here really is to show you and share with you that you don't need to wait until you draw your last breath to embody your soul purpose and that soul purpose is ongoing you're never done with the work you know I say this I say this to my clients as well you're never done with the work so if you feel that you're not yet living and embodying your soul purpose then there is work to do and I'm just going to read out something a beautiful sister has written here um, I was just thinking about how trapped I feel in my body in my lack of earning in other ways right now mm. oh divine beauty I so feel you um, I don't know if we've spoken before but please let me know what your real name is I would love to really really feel into your energy as well my love so please do share so I truly believe that we are eternal beings if we feel trapped and you know it's so interesting uh, my love uh, intuitive voyage is the one who shared that um, another beautiful divine soul actually wrote to me this morning saying that she feels really trapped and you know I'm very open to chatting in my DMs and Eleanor beautiful welcome I am very open to chatting you know I am very open to sharing and being really straightforward with my medicine you know if I see something and I feel something I'll just share that with that person and this beautiful soul actually you know she was beautiful to share so vulnerably and when it come when it came down to the point where I was like okay you know what I can I can share with you some free resources um, I can also hop on a chat with you would you like that and her response was actually I'll think about it yeah how many of you have done that huh just be honest really just be honest oh forgiveness court cutting activating your spiritual gifts is that yeah is that what you're feeling my love let me know but yeah if you've spoken about all your problems how you're feeling very vulnerably and then you say I'll think about it when you're presented with the solution I just want you to raise your hand and say that's me if it isn't you I would just say love that stay the course if you feel that you can make a move stay with me I'm gonna touch on that a little bit okay but I just want to share with you I'll think about it you know it's said so many times and I'm not even an exception to that I do that too and when I really feel into that vibration I deeply know that it isn't about me it isn't about my offer when someone says that to me it's because I'm afraid and when I say I'm afraid I'll be more specific my mind my ego my protective personality is really afraid the ego is designed to resist your up leveling let's put it out there and the ego doesn't like to be exposed so you might be like what no way but I want you to just stick with me feel into your soul feel into your soulful self and stick with me here because this is gonna change your life <laughs> and if you work with me it's gonna change your entire being and this is something I don't put on lightly because you know I've been through a lot in my life some people say that it seems like I've written several stories in my lifetime you know being anorexic and then coming into a space where I thought I had the dream job of my life but I was burnt out disillusioned and then coming into a space where I started to awaken to the calling of tea spirit and I started to serve 
And even in that space, I felt like I needed to be something else to be successful. And then I got into a point where I was earning a lot of money and I'm doing the work that I love. And yet I felt that I was lacking, that I was, that I was unworthy. And so I overgave. And now I'm at a point where I truly, truly feel that my goodness, like I would never give up doing the work. I'm an eternal student. I'm just going to put it out there. And I love that because I'm never done with the work. I'm always unfolding. I'm always up leveling. And this work actually allows me to observe when my ego is resisting the solutions that are presented to me. And when I say solutions, I want you to see not just the mentorship or the support that you're being presented. For example, it's no coincidence that you're watching me right now. Yeah, that is a solution for you. But I also want you to see that solutions are also in the feeling of being trapped that you're feeling right now. They're not problems. They are solutions. And they're asking you, inviting you, are you going to feel this this time? Or do I have to come back again another time? Okay, so going back to your ego, it is designed to absolutely dislike giving away something or to change your state of mind. And Giving away something is something that you just resist. You're just designed to hate it. You're like, oh my God, now I need to sacrifice something, right? Giving away seems to equate to sacrificing to a lot of people. And that's where the fear comes from. That's the fear of change that, that, that's coming up for you. And so you say, I'll think about it when you're being presented with a really great idea of possibly helping you to transform your life forever, right? Who's with me here? Who's with me? Let me know in the comments. So again, going back to what I was saying, when a woman says, I'll think about it to me, I know it isn't about um, what I can, I can do to help. I know that it's because she's not, she's not sure if it's going to work for her. She's not sure if she could do it, really, yeah? But here's the thing, your mind only knows what it knows. And as long as you're attached to your mind, as long as you are attached to your ego, the logical, high-functioning mind, that protective personality of, you know, I, I fear failure, let's not try it at all, or um, I don't know, I don't know what that is, not going to try it, not going to do it, all right? As long as you're attached to that, you don't actually will be able to make any moves you won't because you're just gonna go round and round even if you feel like you're making a move and trust me i know this i've been in that space for a long time i've been in a space where i thought i was making moves but when i came out of it and i'm gonna tell you how i came out of it um when i came out of it i realized that i was just running in circles i was really just trying to outrun my fears of not knowing and so what I did was I really dove deep into the work that I offer to my clients. I realized that I've been teaching that really well, but I didn't really do that for myself. I've just been so consumed by the ego that tells me that I need to do the work for others first before myself. So wrong. I needed to do that for myself first. I needed to do the work to deeply understand why I needed to serve so much in order to feel worthy. And then secondly, I made a huge move. I made a move that I knew I would fear. And that was to invest in a mentorship. And here's the thing I really want you to know. You don't have to know everything and have 100% certainty it will work. You really don't have to. And in fact, you don't actually would know. Never, nobody would. To be honest, it really isn't. You know, when we are stuck in that linear way of thinking, you know, like how they have all these permutations of like how many percentage of success we could have, blah, 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 blah. It's really just this much of possibility that we are constricting ourselves to. And so when I open myself up to the possibility of just like, I believe and I know 
I already know that I'm a cosmic being. I already know that I'm the soul. I already know that I'm the creator of my life. So why am I still so constricted? Why am I still so afraid? And that usually is because there is a subconscious dissonance that is running underneath all of the things that you intellectually understand. So Divine Woman, I'm speaking to you because I know you are probably an intuitive, a healer, a mystic, a light worker, a goddess, a priestess. You help people, you serve the world, you change the vibration of humanity just with your sacred gifts, right? But if you are serving from overgiving, if you're serving from a place of desperation, of a, seeking for approval, of thinking that, um, I'm not worth anything until I earn this amount of money or whatever it is that you have running the show You're still living in that linear form of thinking and your thoughts are running the show for you Not you as the soul You're not creating with sovereignty You're not creating your life and you will know this you will notice how you say things like Oh, I can't do that because there's a recession or, oh my God, I can't do that because my husband, he doesn't understand this, blah, 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 right? So I just want you to really feel into that. And everything I say here, I say with so much compassion. I know where you are. I've been there myself. And you know what? I still do the work every single day. I do the work to really tune in and there is no shame in finding that there are dissonances in us, even as healers, especially if you are healing someone else, especially when you're putting out your spiritual work into the world, you got to understand that every single day is an invitation to wake up as an eternal being. And as an eternal being, you have the ability to have that beginner's mind. And that beginner's mind is going to take you so far. That is the one thing that will create such a presence in you that your magnetism will heighten every single time because you're evolving so quickly. Because you're allowing the light, you're allowing the universal light to just flow through you, to flow through the life force to take over, to show up in your dimension here, in the dimension here. But when you say, Oh, I've done the work, but I don't understand why I'm not getting it. Then you are stopping. You're stopping. You're blocking the, the light. You're closing your doorway from allowing that light in, right? And when I say light, it's important for me to, to kind of mention that I don't mean just the, the amazing, you know, love and light. Oh my God, amazing. And then just shaming yourself for all the inadequacies that you feel, feeling trapped, feeling lack. I'm not saying that at all because without the darkness, there is not going to be light. And my work is really centered upon meeting your dark goddess, alchemizing those pain that you feel into purpose. And I go beyond that because I don't work with your, with the mental stories of what your pain is. I actually go deep somatically into your body. I speak the language of the soul. The language of the soul comes through your body. And that's why your body never lies. Your body never ever lies. That is when things become a really powerful container because then you're actually working with your energy. You're not just working with the mental stories of your past your ancestral traumas, your subconscious beliefs. We're actually going deep into the body and we're teaching and training the mind to understand the language of the body so that it quickly awakens those sleeping circuits, those energy circuits that are asleep are the reasons why you cannot perceive what you need to perceive. Like you can't see the abundance. You can't see why, you know, Everything feels lacking, that's why. And that's the reason why we have to awaken those energy circuits so that you stop seeing all the things as hopeless, 
or a sacrifice or a danger, right? It needs to be awakened. And there are means to doing that by integrating the mind, your body and your breath. Let's not forget, without your breath, there is no spirit, you are not enlivened. Your body is just a dead meat, right? So we want to bring all of those back together. And then once you come into a space where you allow yourself to open up to the beauty of the ceremony and the medicine of plant spirit, you start to really understand what it means to devote yourself to your soul purpose. And that is when you embody your soul purpose. And the cycle goes on and on and on and on. And so if there's anything you can take away today, I want you to know that you are an eternal being and your soul is constantly ever reaching for the sky and rooting deep into the earth. There is no just one way. You can't just keep going up, 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 up and not rooting down. And in other terms, it means, yes, you will be enlightened with your sacred gifts because you are, you are already highly charged with that potency and potential. But now we want to get that back here. We want you to embody that enlightenment. We want you to walk and live and breathe as that. So that is my wish for you. That is what I can do, helping you, guiding you. And of course, it comes down to your free will. Is that what you want in your life, right? And when you allow that to happen, a sacred geometry can finally begin to unfold and it will ripple outward. You will embody that vortex of stillness and it ripples outward as what we know as magnetism. It will grow and it will encompass the spirit of the universe. How amazing is that, right? <laughs> I love it. I'm like, oh, where is this coming from? <laughs> so who's ready to up level? Who's ready to stop resisting your true magnificence? Just say yes, 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 if that is you. And thank you, my love. Oh, thank you, darling. I really hope that it's really been of service. And, you know, I teach women to become truly devoted to their sole purpose by bringing the sacred into their ordinary lives, right? When we say ordinary, it's just really quite extraordinary, actually. And you won't know it until you see it. So I want that for you in every single thing that you do, whether you're picking up your children or whether you are washing the dishes, there is a sacredness to all of that. And I want you to feel that for yourself. So if this is for you, I would love to chat with you. I have a free sacred transformation call that you can book in and apply for. I also have a two day free Siren Goddess Embodied Experience. It's a masterclass called Unflinching Intimacy. You can join that as well. All the link is in my bio and also in the description box. I'm sending you so much love. It's time. The time is now. Okay, my loves. And big kisses. I want to speak to all of you and I hope I do. And so much love to all of you, my loves. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Zoz. Thank you, Eleanor. Send you love. Bye.